So first thing we need to look at is what are we mixing? What two percents? 29% and 14%, good. And we're mixing them to try to produce 23%. Now we'd mentioned yesterday, is what we're trying to produce better be between the two things we're mixing? If it's not, it isn't possible. Do I have any amounts up here, any volumes or? 60 milliliters goes with the 14%, you got her. What amount am I really trying to find? How much 29%? That's going to be X. What amount of the 23% am I going to have? You got her. X plus 60. I just add the two amounts together to get the total amount. So then my equation will become, remember it's concentration times amount. So 29% is 0.29 times that amount of X. Plus, I have the 14% is 0.14 times that amount of 60. That's going to equal, on the other side, 23% is 0.23 times that amount of X plus 60. Now remember, when we go to solve these equations, our first step is to simplify what we can on each side. On the left side, the only thing we can simplify is to multiply those two together. So we have 0.29x plus what is 0.14 times 60? 8.4, looks good. Then we have on the right side, we have the parentheses. We're gonna have to distribute. So 0.23 times x, 0.23x, 0.23 times 6 is 13.8. Now we've simplified everything we can on each side. Our next step is to see if there's anything that we have to cancel out between the two sides. In other words, does the x appear on both sides? And it does. we got to get rid of one of them. Which one are we getting rid of? 0.23, so we're going to subtract 0.23x. That's going to be gone. So over here, this is 0.06x plus 8.4 equals 13.8. Now, we have to subtract 8.4. Point oh six x equals five point four, and then divide by point oh six. X equals ninety. So I go back up. X was the amount of the twenty nine percent. That's in milliliters. That's ninety milliliters. Is that what we were looking for? Yes, it is. So ninety milliliters is how much twenty nine percent we need to mix. How many of you had that right? A few of you? Are we getting better? That's it. You weren't here for it? Yeah. That makes it a little tough. So let's take a look at something just slightly different. Two hundred and thirty milliliters of what do I want to do here? Forty eight percent solution is to be diluted with water to create. 30% solution. How much water should be added?
Yes, what we are missing here is 48% and 0%, trying to create 30%. I'm going to pause it here and give you guys a couple minutes, see if you can figure that one out. Okay, so do we have an amount for a given for any of these? 240 milliliters of the 48%. So we're trying to find how much water, that's the 0%. So the 30% is 240 plus X. Just adding those two together. So the equation, 48% is 0.48, is going to multiply the 240. 0% is just 0 times X. And that's going to equal 30% is 0 0.3 times 240 plus X. So next we're going to combine. On the left side, we can do the 0.48 times 24 is, what's that? 115.2 works for me. Plus 0X, that's just 0, so it's gone. On the other side, we got 0 0.3 times 240. 72 plus 0.3 times x is 0.3 x. Now we are we only have one x here, so we can just go ahead and solve by subtracting 72. I get 43.2 equals 0.3 x. I'm going to divide by 0.3, which gives me what? 144 equals x. So I need 144 milliliters of water added to that. Bless you. Now I'm not, what's that? It does, just because it disappears. It actually makes it easier, but it's confusing. Now we're only going to have maybe one, maybe two at the most of these problems on a test. I don't want to spend a lot more time on them. So I want to move on to our new topic. We're looking at formulas, bless you. So formulas that we might work with. Um, let's take a look, first of all, it's something like this, AX plus B equals C. This looks an awful lot like our equations, like if we had 3X plus 5 equals 32. How would we solve this equation over here? We subtract the 5. That 3 disappeared on me, didn't it? Get back there. So then we would subtract 5. So 3x equals 27. And then we would have to divide by the 3. x equals 9. Yeah, my pen likes to do funny things sometimes. Over here on the left side, we're going to follow the same steps. The first thing, rather than subtracting the 5, we would subtract B. How do you subtract C? What is C minus B? It is C minus B. And then we need to, instead of dividing by 3, we're going to divide by A. Canadian? X is, are you? All right. So am I, actually. But C minus B divided by A is just C minus B. Now, why would I do it like that? Why would I write it like that? Well, let's say I have a formula like this where I know the values of A, B, and C. Or I'm going to be given values for A, B, and C. And I need to figure out X. If I'm just going to do it once, I'm just as good putting in the values and solving it once just like I did over here. But if I'm going to have multiple values of A, B, and C, and I'm going to need to solve for X over and over again, it's much simpler to have it solved where it's X equals, so I can just put numbers in for C, B, and A, and do the order of operations. Because now, if I ask you to evaluate this for A equals 3, C equals 15, and B equals 6. All I have to do is replace those letters with the numbers 
into the order of operations. So x is going to equal c is 15 minus b is 6 over a is 3. Well, that fraction by there says we're going to have to divide, but it's also an enclosing symbol. So we have to do what's on top first. What is 15 minus 6? 9. Now it's just 9 over 3, which is 9 divided by 3, which is 3. We could have got the same answer by putting those values in here. We would have had 3a plus 6 equals 15. That's the 3x plus 6 equals 15. We could have still solved for x, but we would have had to go through this process. Like I said, if you only got one set of values here, it's probably easiest just to do this. Put them in solve that equation. If you're going to be doing it over and over again for different values, you can see where this would be a little quicker, a little handier. So let's say I have a formula, a formula like f equals ma. I want to solve it for a. What do I have to get rid of? The f. I'm going to get rid of it by Dividing. M is multiplying the A. I get rid of it by dividing. So F divided by M is just F over M equals A. What if I ask you to evaluate for F equals 32 and M equals 4? Well, what do I do over here? I put 32 in for F and 4 for M. So it's 32 divided by 4, which ends up being 8. So A equals 8. So I have power equals current squared times resistance. I ask you to solve for I. What am I going to do? Well, first, what's been done to I is it's been squared and then multiplied by R. I have to do the reverse. I got to divide by R first. So P over R, P divided by R equals I squared. Then I have to do the square root. Notice I'm making sure that square root goes all the way down to the bottom of that fraction. So it's the square root of P over R equals I. What do you think? Good stuff? A little simpler than the, the whole uh, mixture stuff? Mixture stuff is easy? We have business skills competition this morning that I've got to set up for at 9. So I have to give you your homework here a little bit early. What's that? Page 267, exercise 6.7. And page 270, exercise 6.8 is going to be your homework here today. Is, there is unit four test is tomorrow. Um, these actually do, the skills we practice today are separated. One of them is asking you to solve for a particular variable like I did here. The other one is asking you to put values in for those variables and find the missing value. Just do the odds on all those, yes. <laughs> 